go on live to answer some of the questions I got about how I'm handling post-show and how I'm handling my reverse and I'm very excited about this so if you guys have questions for me feel free to drop them below what's up Alyssa <laughs> I'm so glad we got to meet hey guys so I'm going to cover a few things that came up in the questions but if you guys have um, any questions you want to ask just drop them below this is funny people requesting to be in this video <laughs> Anyway, okay, so I'm going to be posting this to IGTV after, but let me just preface this with saying that I've been doing really, really well post-show, and um, the only difference is that there's been a lot of unexpected things come up, and I definitely want to keep updating you guys as the off-season goes, because it's going to be an extended off-season that I'm taking, which is where I'm going to start. So after the show, I got feedback that I really just need to grow. I need to build a lot of muscle. I look young up there. In other words, I don't have the density. I don't have the muscle maturity. I don't have the size, and I need that, and that was very clear. Despite it being my personal leanest, I was that was the lightest I've ever been. It was actually kind of crazy and scary. And that's something not a lot of competitors talk about either. Is like as you get into a prep and as you get leaner, and it, it can be painful sometimes, it can be weird and um, tiresome, really. But you know, I went to the show, I felt my absolute best. I feel like I nailed my posing um, with confidence and poise. I got good feedback on the posing side of things from audience members as well as just judges in general. But you know what I was thinking is when I look back at the photos it really bothers me that my arm was so far out. I don't recall ever practicing my arm so far out so now I've been reviewing a lot of old posing videos throughout the prep season to see was I posing with my arm in the front pose like out here when I like to keep it closer that it looks so much more aesthetic so that kind of bothered me so I've already been working on that posing wise it's never too early um, or too late to practice your posing. Um, when I say too late I mean like after a show, if you messed up, you should address it rather than waiting till the last minute next season. Um, so I need to improve on the posing. So I usually, in an improvement season, I work on that during workouts. Um, and then I start to incorporate the heels and the morning routine and the posing every day like I did during prep when I take another prep. Um, but in improvement season, usually it's just during <laughs> my workout. What's up, Savannah? I'm glad I got to meet you this past weekend. Rachel, how's it going? Now I'm seeing everybody who's hopping on. Thanks for joining me. So um, in reflection on that, I kind of realized, okay, I need to practice that, make sure I absolutely nail it because the details do matter. Um, and with that said, hearing the feedback of needing to grow, it was expected. I didn't go to the national show thinking I was going to win. And some people say, oh, you need to go in there thinking you're going to place first, you know, manifest into existence. And you guys know, like, I'm all about that. But there's also a level of reality and respect that you have to have going into it and I'm definitely going to talk to you guys about how I'm doing post-show but I want to like reflect a little bit just on this and say like I went into it knowing that and I just wanted feedback and when Sandy told me I needed to grow I was like okay I knew that but you know I'd taken so much time to grow before but my post-show um, from before was very different because it was very health-based I really needed to get my period back I gained a lot more fat and so I think in this whole extended prep I just ran my body down um, I felt really great this was one of the best preps ever um, and that's carried over into my improvement season now because 2020 did have a lot of cancellations it forced me to go into reverse dieting phases um, it did um, it did put me into a position to like reverse a little bit, take mini off seasons, if you want to call it, not really, but like extended preps. So, you know, I, I kind of went into it knowing that I was going to be able to come out of the show with the same thing. I look at shows like just another Saturday, really, you know, you just show up, you do your thing. And then the next day you should be continuing your lifestyle. It shouldn't be that dramatically different. And that's what used to derail me in the past. So I got some questions about how my days look different, you know, between prep and improvement season, like morning routine wise or just daily routine. And really the only difference is I'm not posing as much. <laughs> so that time goes down a lot. Um, I still journal. I still do all my personal development work all of that's still there and I was still journaling even leading up to a show like I have a champion mentality I'm an IFBB pro this is like I'm showing up in this way it's inevitable for me but going into the show I also knew like the level of competition was going to be different and reality was I just needed to see how it was going to stack up and I re really released the expectation so I could create the result that I wanted which was no matter what happens you have to improve even girls who just finished at the olympia they 
placed like first, second, third, fourth, fifth, 10th, 40th, whatever it was, guess what? They all got feedback to help them improve. No one's perfect. So um, no matter what your placing is, that's always the case. Now, after my show, um, the next day I decided to go on a hike in Arizona. It was awesome. I went by myself. It was a lot of, I took a lot of reflection time on that hike and it felt really, really great. And then I traveled all day after that. And then the next day I was so motivated. I was like on fire. You guys, I was ready to build. And this was where I went wrong. I hit the ground running on Tuesday and Wednesday because the show was Sunday. Monday I hiked and traveled and then Tuesday I was like, okay, I'm going to kill it in the gym. And um, my coach didn't have a plan to me yet, um, even though we were going to start on Tuesday. So anyway, I was just kind of like, okay, I'm going to do more intuition. Like, what do I feel like doing in the gym? What do I feel like eating? And when I say eating what I feel like, like nourishing mindful of my body going through my own mealtime rituals that I give my clients like I'm very mindful I practice what I preach um but there was some challenges too because I was like really bloated and I was being kind of harsh on my body like oh like oh, I'm all fat now and I'm getting all this like what is all this water weight and I can't see any of these it was so stupid it was like I was just this rock like my stomach was like a rock and it was all distended and I was being so harsh and I realized like wow, I'm being harsh on myself for no reason. Like I'm taking positive action for myself other than I didn't rest, which explains a lot in itself. Um, I'm taking positive action for myself. I'm honoring my body's needs and my body has just been through so much. Like she's just having a reaction. I have to be patient and kind with her. So I was able to really move through the concern about how I, my stomach specifically was looking and just embrace like the fact that I get to grow and recover and move into the season and I had all this energy and so then Wednesday you know I started doing my own thing again got a plan um in place and my coach's plan was really to like deload and I was excited about this because this worked so well for me after the last show like it worked so well for my reverse it worked so well for my body uh, only problem was I still wanted to lift. So I was like, I'm just gonna push off my rest day until later and I'm gonna keep lifting and do my lift day now. And then I got hit with this massive, like so much soreness, so sore, so tired, so everything. Now, <laughs> there were also some other things that happened. Like the first day back, I go grocery shopping, meal prep, all that stuff. I pop my tire, great. And I'm trying to catch up with school, clients, business, like it was all this stuff. And that could have in the past really derailed me. It could have made me be like, oh my gosh, like I'm so gonna stress eat or I'm gonna just say whatever, it's all ready. Like screw it, the day's gone by or I need to over, no, not anymore. I tap into my hunger and fullness cues. I make sure that I go, okay, if I'm feeling extremely hungry, I'm gonna eat now or I'm gonna eat two meals together so that I'm not setting myself up for failure later. Um, Anyway, started feeling really sore, really sore. And luckily I'd set up a body work appointment, so that helped to relieve a lot of the tension. But then I got hit with these massive headaches the past couple of days and I could barely, like last night was the worst of them. Last night was the worst of them. So I've been resting the past couple of days and this, you know, is something I should have done after the show. I should have rested after the show and I didn't. And it wasn't out of fear of not nailing my reverse side. It wasn't out of fear of not nailing my improvement season. It was more so because I just had so much fire and motivation in me to go lift and go lift and go train. Um, and that was not smart. I didn't respect my body in that way. So then I started prioritizing self-care in different ways. So um, I booked an appointment with a doc. Well, I tried to book an appointment with a doctor, so I'm just waiting on that. And <laughs> a dentist, like all those little things that sometimes are not seen as self-care but they're really important for your health um and then I've just been focused on relaxing now the past couple days which has been kind of hard for me too because I'm trying to like listen to my body but I also really want to lift and then I was getting in my head like great now my reverse diet's ruined and my improvement season is ruined because I can't capitalize on these like post-show gains and I was getting in my head about it but that's just not the case and I realized I was seeing motivation as fleeting and I was treating it like it was a scarcity mindset. Like, oh, I have to capitalize on wanting to lift super heavy now and push heavy now that I have to do it now because what if it goes away? But that's just not true. Like, it's not ever gone away. So I was just having this fear for no reason and that was really holding me back and self-sabotaging. So in recognizing that, I've been able to take a step back and do what is actually best for me and for my body, um, which is rest. So 
Yesterday, I just went on a walk outside with Robbie, who has been an absolute gem. He helped me with my tire that popped. He's been taking care of me when I've been having these horrible, horrible headaches. Like, he's really looked out for me. He's done so much for me. Like, there's so much he's done. It's amazing. I'm so lucky. And then my car got egged. Walk outside today because I slept horrible last night. So I walk outside to go get some electrolyte drinks and stuff. And then my car was egged. So... Anyway, um, someone had also asked me how I'm approaching my reverse diet. I'm just doing what my coach tells me to do, um, but also with consideration for my own standards and expectations in the improvement season. Um, after the show, I journaled about my expectations and standards, my new goals, things that I was going to focus on, things I was going to be okay with, allow for, aim for, from as tangible as a water intake goal to as intangible as um, showing up a certain way every day. So. It really just depends, but I always treat improvement season different than prep because it is different. And if we try to hold ourselves to the same standard as we do on prep, we're setting ourselves up for failure. And I've talked about in the post show blues um, free series. I talked about that in my post show blues program. I talk about that with my free food series, even like it's different season. Um, so we have to set ourselves up for success. Now, I don't think it has to be drastically different. And that's the other thing is it's not like suddenly I'm eating you know all this different food or um I'm no longer training and no longer doing mindset work or never posing like that's absolutely not the case my lifestyle is my lifestyle the only thing that's different leading up to a show is I don't count macros I follow a meal plan and I make macro swaps up until about five weeks out from a show and then after my show I just reincorporate macro swaps based on what my body feels it needs and wants and desires and that's really become my happy medium that's what I needed from a tangible perspective so that's how I'm kind of approaching my reverse sight there how long is it going to be I don't know we really have to just go by how the body responds and given that I got this like headachiness and needing to rest more it could change the outcome it could change the approach so we have to just be mindful and I always like to just think of how's my body feeling what does my body need what could benefit her right now so some meals have been a little bit more intuitive like this morning I was like I need more fruit so I had more fruit and then there's other days where I'm like I really want bam body and I just eat like more bam body so um it does it does depend um but I'm still very conscious of my goals my actions my body's needs because it's not fair to be like oh I'm just gonna eat all this junk and ruin like make myself feel horrible so there's been some struggles with hunger you know like oh I'm so hungry it's like 5 p.m and I've eaten all my meals what's happening what am I gonna do but I realize a lot of that's just psychological it's like oh well I'm still in like a dieting phase or oh I'm, um it's psychological hunger like oh I've eaten all my meals and it's not actually real right um and if you guys have questions too about how I'm handling certain things post-show like if there's something that's been coming up for you feel free to let me know and I'll say if I've dealt with it or if I'm addressing it um the other thing too is <laughs> the other thing too is I always make sure to honor myself and my goals. So I didn't honor myself post show. I should have taken a rest. I honored my desire to push, um, but I didn't honor my desire to my need, my need to rest. That would have been a proactive strategy that I could have employed. And now I'm kind of paying for it. Um, what else have I there was something else I wrote down oh I was bummed that my tan came out really light on stage I think that was just because I wasn't as dark skin wise going into the show and I should have I should have known the night I put all the tan on I was like oh it doesn't look dark enough and I should have added more and I didn't but overall I'm really proud of myself um let me check my notes okay yes yeah, so I also um continue all my habits like I don't it's not a drastic change so I don't really have anything else to share other than oh wait I did want to talk about my weight I was so like I was getting those concerns about weight and body weight like oh I don't know about my check-ins on Friday with my coach my weight's gonna be up and blah 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 and all these old thoughts about weight and I'm like where is this even coming from but because I'm equipped to address it and that's the thing I had talked about on uh, the secret life of bikini competitor podcast that I was just featured on like a lot of these things that I deal with now, it's more second nature for me to just address them. I'm stronger now because I have the toolbox that I need. I have the practice to do it. And there's a lot of people who don't set them up for set themselves up for success because they don't develop a toolbox. They just say like, oh, it's normal and I'm just going to push through it and struggle alone. But that's not how we should do things, right? Um, so anyway... I've just gotten stronger with it, but the weight thing came up and I was like, oh, what is this coming from? And then I realized, you know what? I have been following my plan. 
I have been pushing myself. I've been doing all the actions needed. I've gotten sleep. I've been drinking all my water. If the weight's up, who cares? My body's going through something. And that was really my mindset and it helped me a lot to release the attachment to the scale. And I really didn't care, you know, what the weight said because nothing compares to the action you take and how you feel about the action you take. Let the numbers be what they are. That stuff takes care of itself when you're taking care of you. Um, so that's really how I work through weight concerns. Um, another thing that I noticed was I would get this desire when my boyfriend would leave to go to work to like eat some more food so that he couldn't see me and challenge my identity obviously which he never would he would never do that but that's just how you know a lot of us are built we get this identity of like competitor disciplined on prep never strays from plan and then as soon as we get that free opportunity to do it we want to capitalize on it and I recognize that this would be a terrible terrible thing to give into because it would reinforce a really negative behavior. And so my awareness allowed me to address it and go, you know what, I'm not saying yes to this because this version of me is not gonna serve me in the long run and it will be so much harder to overcome this pattern in the future than it is to face it now. So recognizing that allowed me to tap into other healthier coping mechanisms, have the awareness of where it was coming from and go through my mealtime rituals, which is something that's part of my food relationship healing program. Another person asked me what my plans are for shows in the future. Sandy told me not to compete until maybe fall. I'm probably moving in the fall and starting my internship then. So things are kind of up in the air. Um, I really have no idea what show I would do in the future. It kind of just depends. I want to see how my body responds, how I do in this, you know, in premier season, how much I can build. Because the last thing I want is to step on that stage and be like, barely have made the improvement she wanted to see. You know, if a judge tells you bring fuller glutes or bring bigger delts and you come back with only a slight improvement, it's not going to look good on you. You know, you have to really respect the process, respect the sport and respect what the criteria is. And we learned that last night watching the Olympia with some of the outcomes, right? So it's important that we are mindful of that. So um, that's why we keep it in mind. I'm just kind of open to whatever happens, but I'm not in a rush to get back on stage at all. I'm really excited to focus on strength and building and those new goals. And then I'll be starting an internship and moving and like other life things come up. So um, the goal doesn't change, but the timeline does. And that's, that's how it is. I touched a little bit on some differences too with the macros versus meal plan. I still follow a meal plan post show. I just make swaps when I want to. I also start incorporating more like water flavors or artificials and stuff like that, which isn't always the greatest thing I do, but I kind of see it's like, <laughs> it's the little thing. It's not a huge thing. It's, it's different. So, um, for example, I'll mix like apple cider vinegar with like a diet crayon juice thing and my L-glutamine and all my little supplements and vitamins and that just is a nice like gut cocktail for me. Actually helps really get things going too. It makes me feel really good and energized. So those are some little differences that I have. But aside from that, you know, when you're training, you should always be focused on progressive overload. When you're training, you should always be focused on feeling every muscle um, activate. It's just a different mindset. Like sometimes when you come out of a show and you're told feedback and you're really motivated, something like switches and you just go up to another new level, right? So I kind of feel this shift and I'm taking it to another new level. And that's what this is about. You know, we're always pushing our limits. So if you guys have any other questions, drop them now because I'm really wrapping this thing up. I don't have anything else to share other than that. I'll be adding more updates as I go throughout this post show phase because I know you guys are very curious as this really is like my bread and butter. But in all honesty, like you guys asked for me to be super open and honest, which I am, I haven't been struggling that much. And I really believe that's because I have the toolbox. I've done the inner work. I've developed the strategies needed. And I'm so aware of them that I address them when they come up with the tools that I know work. So if you guys are looking for the tools, if you're looking for the support, check out my post show personal development program. It's a free, there's a free series for it. You can, if it's more so food related, check out my free food series. If you need more affirmations or mindset support, there's a free competitor card deck. Like I've really gone out of my way to make tons of resources for you guys so you can start developing your own toolbox but taking it a step further if you are struggling don't be afraid to reach out for help get coaching invest right because if you can invest let's say in one of my programs now and I'm obviously I'm biased because it's me it's my programs and I believe in what I do but at the same time like so many of my clients have reached out to me months even over a year later like oh my god I nailed my prep and my improvement season because of this work that we did or oh I find myself using these tools still or oh it's the new running automatic thought pattern so if you want to change a pattern and no longer subscribe to it as normal 
you have to take action to change it. And then you have to reinforce that over and over and over again, conscious, conscious effort. So conscious daily effort and being consistent, just like you are in the gym with your posing, with your nutrition, it's important to do the same thing with your mindset, with your relationship with food, your body, and your goals. So if you guys are looking for all those resources, that's on celestial.fit slash links, or you can just message me for it specifically and I'll send it over to you. But thanks for joining me on this live. Thanks for submitting your questions. If you have any follow-up questions, let me know. I know it kind of jumped all over the place. It's just, um, it's been a week, you know, there's so much to cover and yet not so much to cover, but I really also want to say thank you guys so much for all the love going into my show, coming out of it too. Like you guys are the best. Oh my God. The love meant so much to me, all the messages, all the posts, all the shares, all the stories. I was like blown away. And we just hit over 400,000 unique downloads on Confessions of Bikini Pro podcast, which I'm like, what? And I got to meet so many of you guys at this show, which was just so amazing. So thank you guys all the time for your support and for your love. Really appreciate it. I hope this was helpful for you or gives you some insight. And I can't wait to touch base with you guys later.